It's conference championship weekend. I'm Jen Piacenti with Sports Illustrated, and there is still a lot of football happening this Sunday. So in case you're playing some DFS lineups or maybe you're in a postseason fantasy league, I brought in the best of the best, our own Michael Fabiano, senior fantasy analyst at Sports Illustrated. Fabs, last weekend was phenomenal. I don't know that we can ever have a weekend of football as fun as last weekend, but hey, we, we should try this weekend, right? Come on, guys, give us some good football. Yeah, and there are two very good games going on, and we're yeah. going to start off in the AFC uh, at the quarterback position. I'm starting Joe Burrow this week. And you know what? You look at the numbers. Burrow hasn't been great in the postseason. He has scored a combined 29.9 fantasy points. That's not great. Do the math. It's less than 15 points per game. But I like him against Kansas City. This should be an absolute barn burner there at Arrowhead Stadium. And you look at the numbers, the Chiefs defense in their last eight games, including the playoffs, they've given up 18 total touchdowns and the most fantasy points to quarterbacks. So I like Burrow this weekend in DFS. Matthew Stafford continues to be disrespected. He's at $6,300. I like him. And then talking about the sit quarterbacks, well, there's really only one, right? I mean, it's Jimmy Garoppolo. Like, I get it. He's gotten the Niners to the NFC Championship game again. He's done nothing statistically. In fact, in his two playoff games, he has scored fewer than 10 points combined. And the last time he played the Rams, he scored fewer than 13 points. This one's pretty easy, folks. Jimmy G should be on your bench, and he's $5,400 on DraftKings. I would fade him there as well. I would 100% fade Jimmy Garoppolo. It was painful watching that San Francisco game offensively. 212 yards of total offense, yet they still won the game. Totally agree with you on Joe Burrow. Last time, of course, he faced the Kansas City Chiefs. 446 yards, four touchdowns. I don't know if it'll be the same, but Sports Illustrated Sportsbook has this game total 54 and a half. Anytime you see those high game totals, you want to start those quarterbacks, and Embro is the more affordable option in DFS. Let's jump over to the running back position. How do you see that working out this weekend? It's kind of thin there uh, at this point, right? But I'm going to go with Cam Akers, and I get it. Akers is coming off a bad game. I mean, he almost blew that game for the Rams single-handedly with his two fumbles. But here's what I like. He had 27 touches. This guy had an Achilles injury six months ago. And he had 27 <laughs> touches, nearly a 50% touch share. And I totally get it. The Niners can be very tough on running backs, but they gave up 26 points to Aaron Jones last week. And if Akers is going to get this much volume, uh, I'm certainly going to play him even when the matchup is not great. He's also $5,000 on DraftKings. And then the running back I would sit is Clyde edwards Hilaire. Now, he returned to action last week, but he didn't return to a featured role. In fact, it was Jarek McKinnon who had more snaps, more touches, and more fantasy points among Chiefs running backs, and that McKinnon is playing so well uh, concerns me as it pertains to Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. So I would fade him, and he's also $5,300 on DraftKings, which is more expensive than McKinnon, which is a bit confusing to me. Absolutely confusing, but those of us who are clever know to take McKinnon. I'm taking McKinnon this week, and I just wanted, you know, what you mentioned about Cam Akers is so true. And I think it's interesting that in the postseason, we've had Joe Burrow, Derrick Henry, and Cam Akers, all people kind of in comeback years, and they're, they were all fantastic. I know we only saw Derrick Henry for one game, but man, even 50% of Derrick Henry says to me, he's still a stud. Looking forward to him next year still. Let's jump over to the wide receiver position. How do you feel like it's going to shake out this weekend? Lots of options. We've got... Yeah, we've got a lot of studs, right, going on. I mean, you've got Debo, you've got Cooper Cup, you've got a lot of really good wide receivers. Uh, Jamar Chase, I'm going to go with his teammate, T. Higgins. Uh, I told you to play him last week. He had nearly 17 fantasy points. And again, I think this is going to be a very high-scoring game against the Chiefs. And their defense has struggled against wide receivers lately, allowing the second-most touchdown catches and the third-most fantasy points to the position since Week 12. If you're looking for a DFS bargain, how about Byron Pringle at $4,300 in that same game? Uh, the wide receiver I'm fading is Brandon Ayuk, and, and he's not like a, a hard, fast sit -em this week, but to me, he is the least reliable wide receiver of the big name wide receivers going in conference championship weekend. Now, he had a stinker last week. He didn't score a point, but he wasn't bad. He had given you at least 11 points in the four previous games, including almost 17 points against the Rams uh, back in week 18. But IU is certainly a guy who has not been consistent in the stat sheets. Another player to avoid if you're playing in DFS, 
Van Jefferson at $3,900. The price isn't bad, but Jefferson's numbers have been lately. Yeah, I'm with you. I was looking into Van Jefferson earlier, and he hasn't been good versus San Francisco specifically. They just haven't targeted him. So I'm with you. And Brandon Ayuk, totally disappointing. And, and it follows, right? If you're going to sit the quarterback, you probably don't want to start his wide receiver. It seems to me the only piece of this San Francisco offense we want is probably Debo or maybe someone at tight end. <laughs> yeah. And George Kittle, uh, I told you to play him last week. And he had an okay game, right? I mean, 10.3 fantasy points is uh, is not exactly lighting the fantasy world on fire, but at tight end, you'll take it. But listen to this trend. He has dominated the LA Rams, whether they've been the St. Louis Rams or the LA Rams. 16 or more fantasy points in six of seven meetings against this franchise, including three games with more than 20. Now, in his last game against the Rams, he didn't do much. But overall, historically, Kittle has owned the Rams, and I would continue to start him this week. Speaking of the Rams, Tyler Higby could be a nice bargain at $3,700 on DraftKings. The tight end to sit, I, listen, we've got four guys, okay? So uh, I'm going to go with CJ Uzama here, and I was wrong about him last week. I didn't want to chase the points, and ultimately he had a pretty good game, right? He's had 32.5 points in his first two playoff games of 2021. That's not bad at all. But this is a bad matchup. The Chiefs' defense has allowed no touchdowns and the third fewest fantasy points at tight ends in their last six games. So I'm fading Uzama. He's also $3,400 on DraftKings. Uh, I prefer Higby there. But no Kendall Blanton? Come on, Fabs. I mean, didn't you call that last week, that touchdown? Everybody yeah, had right. that. I, I mean, yeah, I, know. I, I try not to um, go for the low-hanging fruit too much. That was way too low-hanging fruit. <laughs> I'm totally with you there, and I like Tyler Higby as well, that $3,700 price tag on DraftKings. It's really nice. He's actually had three touchdowns versus San Francisco this year. He's the guy that Matt Stafford has found in these particular matchups. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the price is certainly right, so I'm with you. If you guys are out there trying to set your DFS lineups, don't worry. We will also have an article for you on si.com slash fantasy with even more picks and fades for this weekend. No matter what, enjoy the football. And remember to hit subscribe right here so you don't miss any of our Start Sit videos, waiver wire videos, and hey, there's a lot more sports to come. We've got NBA, we've got MLB, we will be here for you. Always at si.com slash fantasy.